All right, so today I'm gonna to be fixing this roll off here. It's not one of our roll offs, it's one of our customers' personal roll offs. They just hire us to haul it and we charge them a flat rate to haul it and, and dump it. Uh, they let some idiot drive the truck and when they were dumping it, the tailgate, the chain popped out of the holder and the tailgate went like that and the driver didn't see and it bent that tailgate up. Bent these two hinges right here and right here. I'm gonna see if we can straighten them out and then uh, if I can't, then we have new hinges that I'll have to, then I'm gonna, it's gonna be a lot more work to replace the hinges because you're gonna have to find something to hold that tailgate in place and things like that. So I'm just kidding, I did it. I'm an idiot, I've been doing this, I don't know, a decade, well, roll offs I've been doing about a total of about five years, five and a half years, but uh, you know, things get away from you and it's a roll off I'm not used to. There was a fridge in the back and the fridges aren't supposed to go in the, the garbage site. You know, normally we'll just dump them out and throw the fridge in there and haul it over to the, the appliance pile. So I opened the tailgate, fridge fell out, and then I wanted to scoot over so I could back up farther. I always stop short of the pile so I can open the tailgate without walking in garbage. And so when that fridge fell out, I hooked the door and then I, I got in the truck Pulled forward, I scooted over the width of the truck or just next to the fridge so I could get back to the pile of the dump. And I think that while I was driving, a door just jiggled and, and shook the chain out of the holder here. Must not have had it in there very well. Then I heard the dozer operator honking and I thought he was honking at me because of the fridge. And I'm like, like this is routine. I know I'll get it, just relax. But that's not why he was honking at me. He was honking at me because this door here was being buried into the garbage. and bending and so just when you least expect it this type of thing will happen to you it's, i'm human and what i did immediately is i called the owner of the tank i didn't even call my boss this owner of this tank is a mason he's been a mason for i don't know three or four decades and he's gonna know if that's not straight you know from across the parking lot when i pull in and but i called him immediately and i said hey this i screwed up what do you want uh we'll do whatever uh to make it right so we brought him one of our roll-offs to sit on and uh and he said, just straighten it. Uh, he just wants it functional. Uh, I'm a, I want it a little better than functional. I want it functional. I'm gonna try and find some battleship gray paint. Um, I'd like it to look nice too. So the way I got this right now, um, the door sprung and it's back and it's actually under a lot of tension. I had the dozer operator at the landfill push that shut so I could get the safety chain on. So these hinges here, they're about a half inch thick plate. They're really heavy. There's some that are heavy. I think the ones that we have are like three quarter inch, super heavy. I tried bending it back with a truck. I just stuck the, the tip of the hoist and tried pushing it over, but that metal is so thick that it just moves the whole box. So what do you have to do? Heat it up red hot using this. It's called the Rosebud. You can see there it's got all them little holes. There's the camera there. Got all them little holes. It's gonna heat up red hot. And what this does is allow you to put a whole bunch of energy into that metal heat it up red hot and uh, allow it to be more pliable so i'm going to heat it up red hot i'm going to hit it with a sledgehammer see if we can get it straightened out that way there is a small crack there's a small crack in the weld right here so i'll probably grind that down to the bottom of the crack and weld that up but anyways yeah with these rosebuds they are actually bright enough that you have to wear eye protection i think a shade five it's just like uh with the torch so I'm gonna go get my shade five safety glasses. So I got these, they're uh, made by Nemesis. They're shade five. And this Nemesis brand is my favorite brand of safety glasses. I get bad headaches. When I wear glasses, they push in and I get bad headaches, but I, I never get headaches with these. This isn't a plug, I'm not being sponsored by them. But they do make these shade five safety glasses. And there's been times when I was working on the oil field and, and we have whiteout conditions with snow and it's really bright. You can't see, and I've worn these as sunglasses before because it's so bright that even with regular sunglasses, I still get a really bad headache. So to switch these heads out, it's really easy. You just want to grab somewhere here, kind of firmly. Then you can grab this uh, top part here and just twist, and then they'll start moving, and then you can work your hand up here and then just start wiggling this, and it'll come, come off pretty easy. And then kind of figure where you're gonna, how you're gonna be standing and the direction you want this pointed and then tighten it up. Try and keep the 
head where you want it, but I always go a little bit away from the way I wanted it. And the reason is, is when you get it tight right here, then you can use the head, twist it back to where you want it. So that should work there. You turn on the oxygen and the gas. Today I'll be using acetylene. Most shops use acetylene, but I've seen some shops using propane for stuff like this. This is a striker right here. I'm sure a lot of you know what a striker is. Um, if you don't do a lot of torching, you may never worn one of these out. It's just a little flint thing and these twist off and you can uh, buy refill kits. I'm gonna put some gloves on. It's gonna get hot. Sometimes you're not paying attention. You go to rest your hand on something and it's not red hot yet, but it's burn the skin right off your hand. Whenever you're getting ready to use the torch to set your your area up, you don't wanna be moving gas cans out of the way while you got a big old flame coming out or you know your cell phone's right here. You're gonna be pointing the torch. I just get yourself ready to go so that once this thing's lit, you don't have to do too much goofing around. You just kind of go until the smoke cleans up a little bit. It's not going to clean up completely like when you're welding, but... You can see there i probably put it in two or three or four times uh play or something or a time lapse but i really did take quite a bit of time to heat these hinges up and this top one here i probably didn't heat that up enough probably gonna have to hit it again but i'm getting closer <clears throat> when the dozer pushed this shut the door was so sprung when you push this shut and i put the chain through here uh, i couldn't get it out it was this was sprung tight and now I'm getting to a point where it's it's closer, but um, it's only easy to right here. After this, it gets hard. But now that I have that chain out, now I can use the door itself as leverage. And you know, I can come down here when it's red hot, and I can use the door as like a big giant pry bar. I'm not an authority on any of this stuff. I've just dabbled in it enough that I don't need someone to hold my hand while I'm doing it but I'm sure there's like a lot easier ways and smarter ways of doing this. I don't have none of those. So get her fired back up here and we'll work on that top one again.
So if you see here over time, as I've been heating this up, that door hanging off over there, it, it's almost, I think, getting really close to where it needs to be. But let's see here. The door has actually been falling as I... What you don't want to have happen is you don't want that door, there's like a sill that it sits on and here's your door. You don't want it to be below that. You'll never be able to close it. So it's not completely off, but it's partially off. But while it's up on the sill here, I'm going to straighten this hinge out. What I am going to do to make sure that that doesn't happen where it's sprung down is I'm going to stick this pry bar um, under the door and shut it. And that'll lift the door up because the weight of the door, no matter what, is eventually going to pull this side that way a little bit. I just put some pressure on the bottle jack right here lift back up on that tailgate a little bit so that it's kind of exactly where i want it and i'm just going to let this cool off uh just like that go get a can of a couple of cans of battleship gray a can of primer it is kind of a primer gray but it's it's actually shiny it's not gloss i just must be semi-gloss or something it ain't it's not the, the flat battleship gray so yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, we'll see if he's satisfied with this. If he's not satisfied with this, um, then I'll have to cut these hinges off. And that's your, that's gonna be a, a couple day project to do that. We'll have to get a loader in here and probably have to weld uh, some hooks to the tailgate here and, you know, support that with the loader and then get everything in place and weld it. The problem when you put everything, like if you just set the tailgate on here, then weld the hinges on, and as soon as you open that door, um, the weight of it pulls pulls down a little bit, makes this side here flex in. It's just uh, nature. So you have to have, I'm sure the people that build these tanks know, but it's probably like a one inch, probably has to be one inch taller at that end or half inch, or maybe it's only a quarter. So that when everything's said and done, you open that door, it doesn't go thunk and fall down. But I start to grind this, that crack out and weld that up. Now the door is sitting like perfectly fine. It shuts, it doesn't even touch the sill. So now what I'm gonna have to do, you can see I got all this really hot. I'm gonna have to clean all this up, um, get this old paint off of it and give it a quick paint job. So we'll do that real quick. Now the real test, I'm going to drop it off and see if he's happy with it. If not, it's going to be a month or so or a couple weeks at least before I could cut these hinges off and put new ones on.
ever think in your life you'd be watching somebody close the door on a dumpster for entertainment? Surprise. Anyhow, everybody, close is fine. Doesn't bind it on the bottom at all. Uh, we'll see if the owner is satisfied with the repair. If he's not, we'll have to, like I said, we'll have to bring it back in. Anyhow, everybody, uh, thanks for your time.